Hi, it's Barry Coombs from Define Tomorrow and Computer World, uh, joined today by George from Veen. Hi Barry, how you doing? Not too bad. So what we want to, to do today is we just want to have a look at disaster recovery. We want to have a look at the, the ways that businesses can and should prepare in case uh, a disaster occurs. And a common question that I get or a common statement I get is, oh yes, we do DR, we, we take a backup. Um, in your mind, what is the difference between backup and a disaster recovery solution? How, how do the two compare and contrast really yeah well they're, yeah they're, you know they're closely segmented you know yeah. they're, they're, there's quite a cl close perimeter and for some people backup is their dr yeah. you know it's what you're going to do if an outage happens mm -hmm. we're going to recover from backup okay mm -hmm. that's your strategy yeah but obviously we can take that to a much more mature level mm -hmm. and and veen's sort of like philosophy since day one has been giving our customers a lot of tools for one simple product you know veen backup and replication yeah does exactly what it says in the tin mm -hmm. you know it backs up the data and it replicates it so it provides that um, consistent and easy replication facility to give customers that instant DR recovery if they want that. Definitely. Okay, you know it's a tool set within the software that's been there since day one, and it allows that sort of like uh, that cross hypervisor uh, replication between two different stacks. Yeah. They could be in the same cluster or the same data center, but typically you'd want to move one of those out into another geographical location so you're protected from maybe a, one of your data centers going down and being able to spin up those workloads those applications, emails, databases, all those front-end applications that customers rely on, yeah. businesses rely on, and actually spin them up in that yeah. secondary data center. And, and, and for me, it, it comes down to, to two main things when we're talking about disaster recovery. It's RPO and RTO, mm -hmm. recovery point objective and recovery time objective. Recovery point, how much data you're able to lose, mm -hmm. and recovery time, how much data, uh, so how long it's gonna yeah. take you to recover that data. And as you say, for some people, the backup can be their disaster recovery plan. Mm -hmm. Please make sure you stick to a free to one backup strategy. That's free copies of your data, two different mediums, at least one copy off site. Yep. The last thing you want to do is store your backup tapes next oh. to your backup server and lose your data center. Yeah, of course. Um, so that might be good for some small businesses. Mm. They don't need to do anything more than that. They're taking the tape off. It might take them a day, two days to recover, but that's perfectly acceptable. Yep. However, as business starts to get larger, as the uh, demand for what they're doing becomes more critical, you find that the RPOs and the RTOs come down. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when they need to start looking at replicating their data. Mm -hmm. Now the difference is, whilst Veeam may allow them to back up multiple times a day, we see most of our customers just backing up once a day. Yep. In night, in out of hours to limit any performance um, degradation or anything like that that may happen and to get one standard copy of the data. Where replication really works for our customers is we do something called a service catalog. Mm -hmm. We understand the services that are delivered from IT to the business. So that's mm -hmm. not names of virtual machines, it's actually email, it's uh, uh, CRM systems. And then we create a tiered system where it's gold, silver, and bronze. Mm -hmm. Gold being the most critical workloads with the lowest RPOs and RTOs going all the way to bronze where I, I can cope with this for, for without a day. And if I lose 24 hours at work of data, it really yep. doesn't matter. So the replication is, is really good and really flexible. And I think a lot of customers, when we're talking about Veeam, they call the product Veeam. They don't mm. actually call it Veeam no. backup mm. and replication. So I think people can forget that actually Veeam, they've already got a product that allows them to replicate workloads from A to B already inside their data center. Yeah, and you know there are a lot of complexities in terms of getting that data off site and getting yeah. that three, two, one rule. You know, As soon as you start adding a, a virtual machine or a cluster of applications, or as you say, as a collection of services, yeah outside of your premises, outside of your data center, the, the complexity goes up and the cost goes up. Yeah. So one of the things we recognized this a few years ago, and one of the things we released in um, version eight was mm -hmm. Cloud Connect. Okay. So uh, it allows our customers that are using uh, Veeam Backup and Replication already, mm -hmm. okay, or Veeam, yeah. uh, and um, basically say, look, I want to move my data, whether it be backup as a service or DR as a service, into another platform. I might not own a data center, I might not have a secondary site that I can stand mm -hmm. these uh, facilities up, I might not have the skill set to do yeah. it. So Cloud Connects allows our customers to connect to someone like yourselves, a yeah. service provider, to be able to leverage their data centers. Now, not only does it allow them to move those workloads offsite and put it into another data center and spin them up, it makes it very easy to do it. Okay. it has some sort of IP masquerading in there so that obviously they can test their DR and their failover plans. Um, we don't use VPNs or any complex yeah. networking, so we take care of that with some um, you know, clever uh, uh, secure tunneling. Um, so really, it's an enabler, and it's built into the software organically. All the customer needs to do is go into the software, say, I want another location for my backups mm -hmm. after I've done my first job. 
and they choose your data center and off it goes into that, that target. Okay, and, and the technology that's in there today, whilst it has matured, has been in the product for, for, for quite some time, mm -hmm. works on uh, a snapshot basis similar to the backup, which is then shipped on a regular basis up to the alternative site, as I understand it. Correct. Um, typically, how often do you see customers replicating using the product today? How, how is it every hour, is it every three hours? How's that kind of working out? Yeah, I normally see them as they get more comfortable with the product. Yeah. I mean, the first thing is customers look at, you know, what's your, what's your run time? Yeah. You know, we start our business at 8.30 in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning, we finish up at six. So they go with this nice, you know, window over the evening when the moon comes out that I can do my backups, I can do my replicas when I know things are running low. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. You know, if a business is running, why don't you do all your maintenance then? Mm -hmm. So they typically do that. And as they start to build up confidence with the product, you know, because our whole philosophy is about being as silent as we can in the background, mm -hmm. trying to capture backup workloads, uh, um, you know, replication without impacting the applications. Because if we run a, 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 a brilliant backup, mm -hmm. but it affects the applications, then we've, you know, there's no point. Yeah. So we're always running quite, uh, you know, harmoniously with the environment, sure. okay? And obviously, as the customer starts to get more courage, get more familiarity with the software stack, they start to get a bit more aggressive okay. with the actual replication. Now, really, these decisions need to come from the business. You know, yeah. somebody saying from IT, the business, what do we need, uh, you know, what's our recovery points here? Yeah. What's our SLAs? How long can we afford to be out of business? You yeah. know? And then the business makes a decision around that. So our software has always been geared up to give people that flexibility, you mm -hmm. know, and actually if they want to do a hourly replication or a, you know, 15 minute backup, mm -hmm. they can do that with our software, it's in that. Obviously then you need to size the storage, the network, the bandwidth, because yeah. the more you use, the more facilities and more resources you're gonna consume as yeah. you do that. But um, we've had some new releases coming out in the next few versions. Okay. Um, we've got version 10 coming out at the end of the year. Yeah. So uh, one of the sort of like almost the um, stopgap for us at the moment is 15 minute okay. RPO. So that you talked about RPOs just a moment ago. At the moment, our software allows us to protect workloads up to about 15 minutes sure. and longer. Yeah. Okay. Beyond that, um, you know, we can't really get down to that small second interval yeah. or that near synchronous protection. Sure. So in version 10, which is coming out towards the end of the year, yeah. uh, we have a continuous data protection as one of the feature okay. sets. And how that's gonna work, it's gonna support VMware, and yeah. we're gonna use uh, native VMware tool set API, so VAIO, okay. to actually query the actual guests that live with inside that. We can then take that data and move that to another hypervisor in okay. a very almost near synchronous replication. Okay. So for customers that have a standard platter of applications or mm -hmm. services, you refer to them, yeah. that they, they, they know this is the good bread and butter application, but they also have these gold tier one applications. Yeah. We know we can protect them at a very much more aggressive ratio okay. and actually m use CDP to, to, to benefit those customers to protect you know, the gold applications, but also have the standard conventional backup technology Fantastic. in the background. So, so rather than committing to something like a 15 minute RPO, effectively it's continuously running and it will then just be down to links, bandwidth and, and the rest of the system as to what you can get that down to. And presumably that will then yeah. fluctuate depending on, on, on the conditions that you're placing that under. Precisely, yeah. I mean, I've got uh, a, a brief screenshot for you here at Barry to show you the dashboard in our software that you'll see. Yeah. In version 10, it's in alpha right now, so I haven't had my hands in it. Okay. I'll have beta come out, community will test it, and then we'll go GA. But at the moment, this is one of the glimpses we've had of it. And you can see in the dashboard, you can actually see that this is our you know interface. It looks very similar to the previous versions yeah. we've had in the past. And you can see there in the top, we have a replication job, it's a VMware job, and the status, this is new, it says TBD syncing. So okay. it's actively syncing that actual workload sure. in the background. And you can configure on this next screen here, you configure a certain set of values. The main one I want you to focus on is at the top there. We can actually see typically where we'd have a, a schedule in the past and you'd have like a backup schedule. Yeah. Is that daily, is it hourly? Well, now we've got this thing in here. It's the recovery point objective, RPO, mm -hmm. and it's actually set to 15 seconds. So okay. you can see it's a very small fraction of time sure. within where we're actually protecting that workload. Mm -hmm. So you've now got the ability to actually go down to that second base interval okay. and say how frequently do you want to synchronize this particular workload, Brilliant. how important it is to you as a business, and then we spin that up onto another VMware hypervisor. Fantastic. Um, and, and in that kind of model, how do you handle things like quieting of workloads that are going to be moving over? Because obviously when you're snapshot in every hour or something like that, you're going to run a VSS driver or something like that, yeah. and what, write the memory down to it. I assume with something like this, you will do a fully quiesced replica every so often and then a non-quiesced workload in between. Yeah, correct. Obviously, like I said, it's still in alpha, so I've yeah. actually not got my hands in it. From what sure. we know at the moment, there will be some sort of VSS operation that happens at an interval yeah. to capture that application awareness, you know, the SQL database logins, all that stuff sure. that we need to know to be able to provide that, you know, 
you know, application consistent recovery, you know, yeah. so we can inject data back into the databases if need and protect that on a sort of consistent level. So not too sure on the nuts and bolts yeah. of it just right yet, but yeah, ultimately there'll be some sort of VSS process in the background to allow us to get that, that, that consistency. Fantastic, and, and that's great. And that's really building uh, on Veeam backup and replication as a product um, that can help customers. And I think the, the two things I want customers to think about is what's your three, two, one backup strategy, mm -hmm. the, the three copies of your data, two different mediums, at least one copy off site. Ideally, I want to get it more than that. I think those are the bare minimums that yeah. we should be asking for. And then secondly, what are your RPOs and RTOs and what are your kind of tiered uh, applications or services inside of that? And, and once you've got all that, once you've gone through those kind of uh, elements, you can look at the products that you've already got. You've probably already invested inside of Veeam. You can look at what's coming out in version 10 and really design a data protection strategy that's going to work for your business. Yeah. And talking about the 321 uh, you know, model, yeah. that's a great stimulator with customers. You yeah. know, what is your 321 strategy? And some yeah. customers are like, it's this. Yeah. And some customers are like, well, I, I don't know. I don't know what the 321 yeah, model yeah. is. So it's good to get them thinking about, you know, where do you want your data? Mm -hmm. Why is it important to have it in multiple locations on different media, one off site, so on and so forth? And then enhancing that, you know, yeah, having another tape offload would be a sensible one. So we can yeah. see that away from, you know, maybe something that's connected to your network, maybe a ransomware thing that would proliferate through your environment, bring down all your backups, not a good thing, yeah, as we've yeah. seen. Um, but, but also, um, the 321 uh, model, uh, we have a nice integration with our software. It's been there for quite a while called okay. Sure Backup. Sure. So as much as somebody can take a backup and it goes down to disk, it goes off site, it's all healthy, when we go and restore from that, yeah. we want to make sure that that data is healthy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with Sure Backup, we actually bring up virtual machines or we bring up applications once the backup process is finished, and yeah. we test them. And we don't just do a checksum, mm -hmm. we actually run a test against the applications of Exchange, we'll log into the Exchange, we'll query the database, we'll make sure everything's healthy, and yeah. then we'll shut that down post-process. So we know that when those backups are stored to the 321 model, and we've got our one off site, mm -hmm. we know that when we store from them, it's good. Definitely. I think that's a really, really important point. That as much as I mentioned the 321, and I mentioned um, about having kind of the service catalog and, and being able to do all those kind of things, None of it is worth doing unless you're actually going to test your backups and test your DR strategy. And it's amazing. You'll ask customers, oh, have you got a DR strategy? Yes. When was the last time you tested it? Well, I should do it every year, but I've struggled yeah. to do it. As far as I'm concerned, the only point I'm happy as an IT manager is when I know that my antivirus is up to date and I know that my backup's working and I tested it within the last month or so, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. and, and I think if things like Sure Backup can help us do that and having tools that make it easier to do testing and failover are really, really critical, really important. Yeah, of course. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Brilliant. So thank you ever so much for your time today. I hope the people that watch have found this insightful. Uh, look forward to speaking again soon. Cheers, Barry. Cheers. Thank Thanks. you.